and everyone. We start with Mark and Coach, and then take your questions. As always, appreciate you guys joining us uh, today. Um, coming off of a bye week, uh, where we felt that like we had a pretty productive week. You know, the goal for us was to get healthy mentally and physically uh, with that time off, and then. Um, take a deep dive into what, what we've done in the first six games, first half of the year from a quality control standpoint, self-scout. Um, guys got some rest away from the field, um, including our coaches, uh, which was important. Um, and we're hopefully able to return some guys uh, from the injured, uh, injury report that have been banged up. Um, you know, when you talk about injuries, uh, get this out there now. Um, we'll be without, obviously, Jay Sean Jones. Uh, who had a lower leg uh, injury that will require season-ending season surgery, um, as well as uh, Darrell Chami. Darrell Chami had season-ending upper body uh, surgery. We do think we'll be able to uh, have Brandon Jennings back. We're very hopeful to have Jacorian Bennett and Kenny Bennett back in the secondary. Uh, a little bit about Minnesota, obviously, coming off of a big win over Nebraska. They've won four their last five games. Uh, when you look at their depth chart, they're very senior laden, grad laden program, which, uh, you know, when you, when you have that type of experience, and especially with the type of program they have, uh, it'll be a great challenge for us. Um, they're strong on both sides of the front. Their whole line, um, like I said, a lot of career starts out of that group. Uh, their D line, again, a lot of career starts. They've got a grad transfer, Mike Linebacker uh, from Abilene Christian, who has been a great addition to their uh, defensive. Uh, front. I know they're highly ranked defensively in run defense and then scoring defense. Uh, and then on offense, the quarterback is who makes them go. You know, Tanner Morgan seems like he's been there for a long, a long time. Uh, number seven, Altman Bell, is a, a big time weapon and makes contested catches, has kind of been their number two guy up until this year and has really stepped up uh, to be a number one receiver. Um, as I told our team, we sit here four and two, and if somebody told us at the beginning of the year that we'd have a chance to be four and two at the halfway point, I think every one of us would be pretty happy with it. Um, obviously, um, you know, being able to get some guys back from injury, uh, we're hoping that we can, again, start this second half of the, the season uh, the right way. I feel our best football is still ahead of us, and, and we've got a lot of work to do. But I've been really encouraged by this team and the way we've practiced and the way they've played uh, to the standard. You know, for the most part, um, you know, we lost to two of the top teams in our league. Uh, again, and not not being uh, with all of our players, and, and again, it shows us we still have a ways to go against the elite programs. Uh, but I feel very confident that we'll get there because of the type of kids we have in our program. So, um, our captains for this week. Uh, we challenge Fa'al Matau, uh, Sam Okwanu, and Lantez Rogers. So those will be our three captains leading us up to Minnesota. With that, I'll open it up for questions. Finder Four Gates makes your company you work. Mike, at, at, coming out of the bye week, you know, obviously you guys took a look at the last two games heading into it. D defensively, uh, what do you feel is fixable from what you got, what you guys saw on tape and going up against a team like uh, Minnesota? What sort of pressure does do, do they put on a defense like yours? Well, I think the big thing is, you know, they obviously are a team that wants to run the football, um, you know, with their front. Um, they do a great job in the RPO game. They do a good job of the shot plays off the run game. That's who they are. Um, you know, I felt like one of the things we've been able to do against two of the top teams was play to run, but um, we gave up a lot of explosive plays in the passing game, which hadn't been uh, something that we had done uh, earlier in the year. But obviously when you're playing uh, without your top three, four corners, um, you know, the next man has to step up. Uh, like I said, we faced two of the top teams in our league, and the thing that was disappointing is that we haven't created the turnovers we had in the first three games, or first few games, and the last three games we haven't uh, created any turnovers. And then obviously we've turned it over on the offensive side of the ball. And no matter how you cut it up or however you look at it, if you if you're not creating turnovers and you're turning it over, you're not giving yourself a chance to win. And so for us, we've got to get back to creating turnovers. 
uh, obviously uh, coming up with the best scheme that can keep the ball in front to limit the big plays that we gave up. And uh, I feel good that we've got some of that stuff addressed uh, through the bye week. Back, I believe. Coach, good to see you. Um, hey, Ali. Did you communicate an extra sense of urgency because of this game, knowing the situation you were coming off the bye week with the last two losses? Is there more of an urgency for this to be a get right game for your program? No, um, you know, our opponents are faceless and nameless. We have a standard in which we go about every week of practice. Uh, what, what I've made a priority for us during the bye week was getting mentally and physically healthy. Um, you know, we're a team that kind of were limped into the bye week hoping we're getting some of these guys back, which I've been encouraged with the time off. We've been able to, you know, maybe bring some of these guys back, but then also uh, what a great opportunity for some young guys to have to step up. You know, when you lose Jay Sean Jones and, and Dante Demas, and, and you add a Marcus Fleming and a Dede McDougal, who are two talented young players in our program that, you know, what an opportunity they have. And I think they both, when you, you know, study them and you see the type of players they are, I feel like, uh, I'm excited because we've created some depth there to where now these guys get these opportunities and we get a chance to see what they do with them. Coach, with the young defenders that got to play in the later part of Iowa and against Ohio State, uh, what is their mood and, and how did they grade out being freshmen and their first times on the field there? How do you think they graded out against mm -hmm. Ohio State? Not too well, but okay. I'm wondering no, what, I'm what you say to those guys to keep them in their growth pattern. They play corner. They're going to get beat. Uh, I'm looking for guys that we recruit guys that play with confidence. Obviously, they went against, you know, in Ohio State, two or three of the top receivers in our league and against Iowa. Uh, one of the top programs in our league. So those were our challenging matchups for young players. But that's why we recruit them here. That's why we coach and develop them. I got a lot of confidence in guys like Corey Coley. You know, Levante Gators played a lot of football around here. Um, you saw a few other guys out there, you know, that, that got opportunities. Um, so what we do is, again, um, they've got to keep their confidence. And ours, it's our jobs as coaches to make sure that we're doing things that they can execute that allows them to be their best. So. You know, what we need to do, if we can't play man coverage, then we need to adjust what we call on the back end and uh, do what our personnel allows us to do. And that's what Brian Stewart and the defensive staff have really did a good job as we looked at who we are now based on injuries, based on performance, to, hey, let's put the best schemes in place, which give us the best chance to win. Uh, Coach, uh, on the same subject, I noticed that Dante Trader moved up into the depth chart this week. Uh, or, you know, I know his history of being from the guy. I've watched him and everything. How satisfied are you with what he's shown so far? Because for a freshman to get there, it's unusual. Well, I mean, he's gotten there because of obviously injuries. Um, he's been a guy that we've continued to develop. He's played for us just about in every game. He's become a guy that's helped us with special teams. Um, I think Dante has a really bright future. He's one of those guys that's always around the ball. He's smart, tough, reliable. Um, but obviously, you lose a guy like, uh, you know, 38, who Glendon Miller, who we moved the corner, and then Glendon goes out with a concussion the first kickoff of the game. So Dante moves up. And so Glendon's working himself back, which we expect him back this week. But we've also, because of the corner situation, we moved Glendon the corner, which now allows Dante to be in the two deep. Um, I told you guys earlier this year when I asked why we play so many players, this is exactly why we do it. Because this is a physical game. You're going to lose bodies. You're going to lose players because of the physicality of the, the game of football. And we've got to make sure that now that we're in that meat of our schedule, that these guys aren't playing for the first time. And we've been really happy with the way Dante's developed. He's a guy that was on the field against Illinois during crunch time. So he's building his toolbox. And like I said, uh, got a bright future around here. And I know you mentioned Jacorian. Did you mention Kenny Bennett? In yeah, I said okay. Jacorian okay. and Kenny. Kenny are both. They practiced um, the last couple of days. I'm hopeful they'll be both game time decisions. Um, but if not, we'll play the guys available. That was probably my fault. Um, when, when you look at the self scout from last week, um, what's something that you particularly kind of want to see? Um, show up in this game that maybe shows that you took that stuff? Well, I think the biggest thing, so our recipe for winning, Emily, is create big plays and limit big plays and create turnovers and limit turnovers. And if we kind of do those things, like the 
two on offenses to limit turnovers and create big plays. And if we do it on the opposite on defense, you usually give yourself a chance to win. You know, each week, um, we, 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 I do a thing for our team that says the value of turnovers. And, you know, when you study the Big Ten based on all the games played this year, uh, the teams that are on the plus ratio side of turnovers is like 32 and 5, the, the overall composite record. And the guys under that or the negative side of the turnover ratio, they're like 9 and 20, whatever. So to me, it's a pretty simple formula that we got to get back to is creating turnovers, taking care of the football on offense, uh, generating some explosive plays with our offense, which we feel we got weapons in the backfield, a quarterback that has the ability, receivers and tight ends that are still available and then defensively limiting those big plays, which you know we, did, we didn't do against Ohio State, we didn't do against Iowa, uh, the way that I feel like we're capable of. Sean in the back, right? Hey Coach, good to see you. Um, What's up, Sean? Just taking you back to last year's game against Minnesota, just what you remember about that night and how special that night was for you, your program, and your players? You know, that, that was a long time ago, man. I think we had the pandemic going or something back then. <laughs> kind of still is going, but no, I mean, I think this is our sixth time playing Minnesota now. I think the last game of, uh, you know, the crossover rival game that, that we've had. Um, I just remember the ebb and flow of it, having studied it again because it's in our scouting, uh, our scout film that we use this week to kind of say, hey, here's some of the things that worked that didn't work. I know that our quarterback played at a really high level, made plays with his arm and his feet. Uh, we generated some explosive plays. I know we got a couple of turnovers there in that game. Um, it was a really, really hard fought game. I mean, we got out early. They made a great comeback, game went in overtime. And you know what? It'll be that type of game this year. Um, road wins in conference are tough, tough, tough to go get. And we, it's going to take our best. And as I challenged our team, we got to show up. Our best has to show up on Saturday at 2.30 uh, Central Time up there in Minneapolis. And, the way that happens is we got to prepare Monday through Friday uh, to our standard as if we're going to play the best opponent that we can face. And I think if we do that and we do a good job of uh, just playing to that standard that we set, uh, we'll, we'll be okay. Hey, Coach. Good to see hey, you. Hey, man. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing well. Great. Um, yeah, I know you mentioned, you know, Ja'Cory and, and Kenny, obviously, you know, potentially could come back, you know, it all kind of checks out. But I'm kind of curious, you know, if they do, how does that help the defense maybe get back to where they kind of were playing? Or how does that help uh, maybe disrupt Tanner Morgan a little bit? Well, I think the big thing is those are experienced players. I mean, you know, Ja'Corian started since he's been here and uh, has a skill set that I think that will allow him to play on Sunday. Kenny has the same type, adds link to our secondary, can run, has a physicality presence. You know, um, I, I think being able to add them back gives us some versatility in some of the things we might want to do. Um, obviously, we, we have a good understanding of who Minnesota is. They want to run the ball and they want to take shots off the run, uh, the play action shots. And then they've got some RPO stuff with a quarterback that kind of makes them go. So the big thing for us is, again, limiting those explosive plays. And I think both those guys, because of their skill set, allows us to, to limit those explosive plays. Two or three more in the back. Two questions for me. Um, you talked about getting explosive plays. Obviously, at the beginning of the season, the first, the first couple of games, Dante Demas was your main target for the explosive plays. So how have you adjusted to his absence and obviously the defense focusing more on Rakim Defending our from getting those plays. So how, how have you seen uh, where you're going to get the explosive plays come and the progression that Talia has made in going through his progression? Man, you just took me through a maze, man. <laughs> I think what you're asking is losing production like we had in Dante Demas. What do we do? I mean, it's next man up. I mean, it's always been that way with me. You've never heard me be a guy up here that cries about losing players to injury. We've recruited a room of receivers that I think are really, really strong. And, you know, yeah, Dante Demas made a bunch of plays for us. Rakim, at one point, made a ton of plays for us. Uh, we got Jay Sean Jones back. You know, Daryl Jones has big play potential. Um, is there Was there a comfort level? I think so, between the, uh, Demas and, and Leah. But as I said earlier, we've got uh, you know guys that have had opportunities because of the depth that we created, like a Daywan McDougal, uh, like a Marcus Fleming. And, I'll just tell you right now, both those guys are were heavily recruited, 
had a lot of offers, could go anywhere in the country for the most part. And we're very fortunate that those guys are the next men up for us. A guy like Rakim, uh, as opposed to Rakim, um, is, is a guy that, as I've talked to him the last couple of days, he's no longer the little brother in the room. He now has to become kind of the big brother. And uh, I always say leadership is having a positive impact on others. Uh, there's no different here, so Rakim, we going to have to get a little bit more out of him. Our quarterback it does a great job of distributing the ball. We got tight ends, Corey, Co uh, Corey uh, Deitches, uh, Chig, both talented players, our running back. So we still got enough weapons because of how we recruited that we can find and generate explosive plays wherever we need to. And our quarterback has the ability to, to do a good job of finding those guys. Uh, quick, quick follow up. Um, through the how has Talia adapted towards seeing a opposing crowd so far in the season? What have you seen from him? Well, I think he's adapted very well. Coach against <clears throat> Ohio State, uh, right here, sorry. That coach against the Ohio State, Chiggas and McConkle have led Maryland's pass catchers in receiving yards. What have you seen from him as this season has gone along in his pass catching ability? You know, uh, the good thing is that Chig has really developed himself both as, you know, as much as the pass catching, um, his ability to, to own the C area, as we like to call it. Um, he's a talented matchup for us, uh, a guy that we've got to continue to find ways. You know, I'm big on trying to find ways to get your best player at the ball. And Chig is one of those best players for us, along with Corey Deitches. Uh, like I said, uh, the, the room of running backs that we have with Fleet Davis and Colby, Colby McDonald stepping up now, as well as uh, Penny Boone, which I'm, you know, Penny's had a great week of uh, practice during this bye week, and I'm excited for him uh, with the injury there to Isaiah Jacobs that kind of now, you know, Penny's the next man up. So I've been happy with the way Chig has progressed in our, pro, our, our system, and definitely a guy that we've got to continue to find ways to get targets. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, guys.